Hello everyone, welcome back to WP Data Tables videos. In today's video, we'll dive into the placeholders feature. They act as predefined templates that get replaced with actual values when your table is executed. They're especially useful for customizing MySQL queries and making your data more dynamic. Let's explore how to use them effectively. As mentioned in the intro, placeholders can be understood as search and replace templates. So if we take a look at this table, it's a simple select all from employees from demo. And it shows uh, a table of 100 entries. So if I add a condition where ID equals current user ID, uh, and I verify that this column has the origin name set to ID and I'm using the current user ID when I save the changes it only displays a single row where the order ID is 5 which is my current user ID so if someone with a different user ID would log in they would only see their row or rows depending on how many rows they have in the table. Uh, another use of placeholders in the SQL query would be to uh, use the position column to filter only project managers, for example. So I need the um, origin name and I enter a condition where this column equals variable one. Variable one is going to contain this, so project manager. And since it's a string, my advice is to add it in single quotes like this. So when we save the changes, the table refreshes and it now displays only project managers. So it's showing one to 10 out of 14 entries, which is filtered from 100 total entries. Another use case of placeholders would be to use them as filtering values. So if we add, let's say, junior C++ developer uh, and set the variable two to be the predefined value, nothing's gonna happen at this point because we haven't defined the variable two placeholder. But if we go here and we add junior C++ developer and we save the changes. Now when the table refreshes, we can only see the junior C++ developer, which is showing one to nine entries filtered from 100 total entries. Cool thing about placeholders and WP data tables version 6.6 .6 onward is that we can update the value of the placeholder through the URL. So let's say placeholder table and we add the short code in here now when we view the page we can see it in here and as you can see it's filtered per variable 2 now if we include the question mark WDT underscore var2 equals project manager and we hit enter WP data tables replaces the variable 2 so the variable 2 is as we can see here um, defined as junior C++ developer but when we change it through the URL to project manager it automatically updates the filter WP data tables includes nine variable placeholders and 11 fixed placeholders. So it contains the current user ID, the current user login, which is the username, the email address, the display name, the first name, the last name, current date, current date and time, current time, current post ID and WP database prefix. 
The current post ID refers to the ID of the page or the post that you're currently viewing. So if we take a look at this page, it's named placeholder table, we can actually use that as a, a filter in the table given, of course, that that table contains that data. Apart from changing the placeholder uh, in the URL, you can also change the placeholder per page. So we know that variable two is set to junior C++ developer. But if we change it to be project manager, it will update the short code. So now when we save this and refresh this page without this, so only the page loads, we will see that it also changed the value of the placeholder to project manager. So this is good if you want the same table to be filtered per the same variable placeholder on one page showing project manager on another page using the default junior C++ developer uh, then on the third page using um, junior PHP developer and so on an example of how you can use placeholders as editing values is to use the one of these so either current date current login user email you have the freedom to choose um, you need to modify the column. So under editing, the predefined value will be current date. So once we save this, when someone starts adding a new entry, this column will automatically be populated with the current date. The MySQL query can also be changed to use where ID is higher than variable one and ID is lower than variable variable five for example so we'll set variable one to be let's say 50 and variable five will be 95 so once we save the changes the table refreshes and it shows only people from ID 50 to 95. So here we go. 51 to 94. Now, of course, if you understand the MySQL query, you'll understand that it's larger than 50 and lower than uh, 95. So if we include the equal sign, it will also include number 50. But that's a whole other subject. Now that I've shown you in short how to work with placeholders in MySQL query based tables, um, let me just quickly show you how to use them in linked uh, tables like CSV, Excel, Google Spreadsheet. So placeholders are still there. You can still use them, but not for table generation, but only for filtering. So if we add UAZ, to be a placeholder number two. Again, we can access this column and define its pre-filtering value to be variable two. When we save the changes, table refreshes, and we can now see only these two entries with UAZ. This video shows you just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to placeholders, since you can play with them in the query, you can use them in filtering, you can use them as predefined editing options, you can combine multiple placeholders, you can replace default ones, your hands are untied. That concludes our review of placeholders in WP data tables. We hope you now have a better understanding of how to use them to enhance your tables and make your data more dynamic. If you have any questions or you have a suggestion about our next video, please leave those in the comment section below. While you're there, don't forget to like, 
share, subscribe, and hit that bell button to be notified about all the upcoming videos that are coming from this channel. Until next time, take care guys. Thank you.